Hello, welcome to Smokebox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is whiskey review number 79. What I have for you today is a budget blended whiskey from German retailer Lidl. And it's this. The Queen Margot three year old. Now this is a whiskey that, uh, that Ralphie, the, the, uh, the Lord of uh, whiskey videos, reviews, not too long ago. The OG of whiskey videos. Now, I picked one up, it's not my first bottle to be honest, I've, I've picked one up uh, recently, uh, just, just before his review actually, because I'm quite a big fan of whiskey cocktails. I make a mean old fashioned, if I do say so myself, and one of my go-to drums, particularly if I've had a bit of a hard day and I don't want to sink too much into something and spend 25 minutes with a malt, I'll make a rusty nail. And a rusty nail is a really good way of making a very simple cocktail. It's literally one ounce whiskey liqueur, such as Drum Beauty, and one ounce, generally speaking, blended whiskey. And why not this one? It does not break the bank at £11 a bottle. Or £11.99. It's £10.99 or £11.99. Either way, it's not going to set you back much. Now, Queen Margot. As I say, it's from Lidl. It's bottled at forty percent. It's going to be chill filtered. It's going to have a lot of colouring in there. It's a three-year-old whiskey. I think the fact that they've actually put an age statement on the bottle is a great testament. They're actually not hiding it. It's three years old. That's great. A lot of people would probably just give it a name, or just call it blended Scotch whiskey. But no. And uh, and this is this is one of those whiskies that. You see, I mean, you can see there, right? So it's got it's won awards, right? It's won awards of, of a certain caliber, and you, you get this, don't you? I mean, like newspapers like the Mirror and the Express and the Daily Mail and people like that and the Independent online see things like this win awards and say, "Little ten pound whiskey, best whiskey in the world," and you thought, oh, "Jesus Christ, stop! Get some context, man. What sort of journalism is that?" What sort of journalism is this? Um, so, this is not the greatest whiskey in the world, guys. Sorry, if, you know, massive spoiler alert here. Spoiler klaxons are going off. This is not the best whiskey in the world. It's also not the worst whiskey in the world, which is why I drink it. As you can see, you know, I do use quite a bit of it. This is this is not just a bought for this review thing. I do, I do drink this. Um, so, without further ado, let's see what this nice, simple drum has to offer. Legs are running quite quickly down the glass, as to be expected. I'm also magnifying my head. Oh, it's a bit funky, isn't it? Sorry about that. Right, on the nose. Very pleasant. Inoffensive, but pleasant. Sugary barley. Vanilla custard. A tiny whiff of smoke. Some citrus thing. Yeah, a bit of lemon. A waxy lemon, lemon zest, lemon juice. A whiff of smoke, oddly. Just a tiny, tiny little whiff of smoke. Like coal smoke though, not wood smoke, I'm thinking coal smoke, it really is coal smoky, only a tiny bit. This is not a smoky whiskey, it's not a peated whiskey. There's just this tiny little note in there that's just bang on coal smoke. It's quite some sort of light fruit in there, I'm thinking like green apple or conference pears. Got a lot going on to be fair. Butter toast as well. Salted butter toast. Let's try it on the palate. Do you know what? The mouthfeel's not actually that bad. I have drunk this straight before. 
but like I say, I do tend to use this to make my rusty nails. Because A, it's cheap, B, it's consistent. And when you're putting something in there with something like Drambuie or Glidar or something like that, Glide, you know, the whiskey liqueur is quite overpowering, it's very sweet, it's very you know, honey, lead, heathery, whatever it might be in it, depending on the brand. It will generally overpower quite a lot of characteristics that you, you find in a, in a model or even other blends. So you don't want something that you're looking for to have, you know, if you're going to use like an Ardbeg 10 or something, you'll still get the peat and the smokiness, but that, that honey that's in the liqueur itself will just overpower a lot of elements to it. So you don't want something that's going to be expensive or, you know, particularly crafted, that you might say. You just want something that's going to be able to put up with it and it's going to work alongside it. And this does the job nicely. Now, like I said, the mouthfeel is actually quite nice. And on the palate, I'm getting more vanilla. I'm getting sugary cereal. I'm getting sugared cornflakes, in fact, if you can believe it. Shredded wheat. It's all about cereals, man. We're not just talking barley. No, 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 no. We're talking the, the entire Kellogg's range. Um, some vanilla, yes. Yes, there is. Yes, sort of like creaminess to it as well, oddly. It's actually quite creamy. A little bit of citrus like I got on the nose as well. Now, this is cheaper than the Bushmills original that I reviewed a few, t a few weeks ago. And uh, for me, this, this is actually a little bit richer, a little bit, bit of a step up. Because I think, you know, obviously the Bushmills was triple distilled. And that smoothed it out a little bit. This has retained a little bit more character. It's got a little bit more about it. Again, honey, vanilla, citrus, cereals. A little bit pepper, white pepper. Finish, sweet. Again with the honey, that green fruit comes back into place, there's that green apple again. Quite lingering, sweet. Do you know, it's a nice little drop that actually, genuinely. It's a nice little drop. I have, over the years, over, God, I mean, even when I, when I started drinking, I started off on whiskey because in my head I was like, right, I've got, 12 quid to last me the week here, what can I spend it on? And I used to buy Tesco value whiskey, Sainsbury's value whiskey, you name it, I drank it. That's what I started off with. And for me, that's well above the, that, that. This is well above those. Honestly, this is probably, in this range, this beats Tesco's, Asda's own, Sainsbury's own, equivalent priced and equivalent levelled whiskies into a cocked hat. This is well above that, genuinely. It really is. It's actually a good dram in its own right. It's uncomplicated. It's no fuss, no nonsense. It knows what it is. Little knows what it is. They're not trying to flog you a massively, you know, craft presentation, crafted product bullshit. It's a three-door blended whiskey. It's there to do what blended whiskey is there to do. Be consistent, affordable, and provide some enjoyment. And that's exactly what this does. On that note, onto the score. I'm going to give this... 5 out of 10. I actually quite like that. I prefer it to the Aberfeldy that I had. Genuinely, I do prefer it that to the Aberfeldy that I reviewed last week. On that note, if you can believe it, thanks for watching. See you soon.